All right, welcome back to coverage of Grand Prix Oklahoma City. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe. I'm in the booth with Jacob Van Lunen, and we have made it. It is the top eight. We're in the quarterfinals right now. We just watched John Pennock draft his deck. He's playing against Will Lowry. Will had a, an, an amazing tear, really, through, the, through this tournament. He's the first seed coming into the top eight, and uh, he only dropped one match. He lost no matches in sealed, and, and he 5-1 uh, the draft. So truly impressive performance for, uh, for Will, and uh, he's certainly going to give uh, Dr. Pennock, as he is known on Magic Online, all he can handle here. He's, uh, there's a turn two omen speaker here. I think it's pretty likely that uh, we're going to see Pennock keep both of these cards on top. Triton Fortune Hunter has uh, Ordeal of Thassa to follow it up with. So he's going to get to draw an extra card off that, crack in for three right away. Okay. And, uh, now, he know. looks like he pushed one. Okay, so I the didn't... burnished the burnished heart is almost certainly going to the bottom. Okay. Yeah. So here's a fortune hunter off the top. Yeah, you were right about that one, JVL. And is there a miss land drop here for Will Lowry? It seems like there is. I mean, the majority of his deck costs two or less mana, but it seems that he doesn't even have one of those two drops in his hand. Okay. I, I don't know. I think his deck might want to aggressively mulligan in these games, and it seems like he didn't do that. All right, well, there's a land off the top there for Will Lowry. He's a white-blue deck, as you can see. He's got Extremely a Nimbus aggressive. Nyad. He's very aggressive. Yes, he's only playing 16 lands, as a matter of fact. Oh, okay. Well, he seems to have gotten there. He's got a Nimbus Nyad pulled to the front. I don't, can't really tell what else he's got, but uh, an island to kick things off. And he's going to play... Hmm, that's interesting. He's going to lead off with the Lagana Ban Elder there. See, I actually like that play. I mean, okay. he's playing around an ordeal, getting put on the Triton Fortune Hunter. Ah, I see. And uh, very nice. Conveniently, uh, Pennock does have that ordeal, so strong play there. That's that's sweet because if he would have let off with the Nimbus Nyad, then he could play the Lagana Ban Elder the next turn and gain the three life to help with some type of race, get in for some damage. But uh, yeah, now he's made that ordeal look a lot worse that uh, John Pennock has in his hand. All right, so let's see what he's going to kick th this turn off with. It is Nylea's Disciple. So gain two life. He's going to gain life equal to his devotion to green. In this case, he's only got the one green creature, but he just has to say go here. Yeah, I mean, the... Will... Re uh, sorry. Um, Will Lowry, you know, he has three to him play. A Lagana Band Elder is going to you know, not be worth as much value as a train of fortune hunter as the game drags on, so. Mm -hmm. Here's a wing steed rider for Will Lowry, and he's going to pass the turn back. No land drop again, so he's missed a couple of land drops. He hit it last turn. Didn't hit it this turn. 16 lands is, I mean, he, I see he has a, an observant Alsaid and a Nimbus Nyad in his hand. Feels like him hitting land drops isn't that bad for him, you know? Mm -hmm. just, get, just getting, just running the full 17. Oh yeah, I, I don't. I don't think you necessarily have to play sixteen when okay. you have like a whole bunch of things that you know can bestow. Because mm -hmm. then you know you want to hit your land drops in the first three turns anyway, and then if you draw a fourth and fifth land, it's pretty nice, you know. Yeah. Get, getting to turn those wind drakes into griffin guides is pretty nice. Yep. All right. So Lagana Ben Elder is going to trade off here for Nelia's disciple, but that allows two damage to sneak through. Drop Will Lowry down to seventeen. And what's the follow-up play? Well, we know he has two of these. For those of you that were watching him draft, we got to see him pick up two Centaur Battlemasters. And uh, Will Lowry just found a Divine Verdict, so it's going to be a pretty good one here. He might leave open the mana for that, but if he does, Penix is a smart enough guy that I doubt Penix is going to go ahead and try to stick an ordeal onto a Centaur Battlemaster uh, when his opponent has four mana open, so... Now, will he have four mana open? <laughs> oh, it's looking like no. Yeah, he, yeah, he hasn't had that fourth he land. Still so. hasn't drawn that land, so oh, Observant Alsaid on turn 100 is definitely not 
what Will Lowry had in mind when he, he put this deck together. Definitely not. All right, so an ordeal Thassa coming down in the center of Battlemaster, making it into a 6-6 six, six before it attacks. <laughs> and then it's going to become a 7-7 seven, seven when it attacks, and John is going to draw two extra cards. So that ordeal of Thassa will be a two-mana target tar creature gets four plus, one, four, uh, four plus one plus one counters and draw two cards. Pretty good deal for two Pretty mana, I imagine. Pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah. So here's the 7-7, seven, seven, and yeah, we're not scrying, we're just drawing them. And he's like, yeah, sure, I'll go down to 10, I guess. Can't be happy about it, but really doesn't have a choice here. I and mean, that's just a ton of damage. I yeah, this, this is just going to get ugly. Wow, is that even a Savage Surge in hand, too? Yeah, I mean, he could have put him down to 5. He could have put him down to 5. But there's not really any reason to. I mean, the, the Battlemaster is now lethal any time it attacks from now until eternity. Uh -huh. So, What does he have in his hand, though, that he's keeping up the mana for here? Uh, maybe nothing. I don't know. Okay, because, I mean, wouldn't you uh, attack with the Fortune Hunter there, too, then? Got a seven after you attack. So that you could use the Savage Surge to draw a card and, and potentially get him? Well, no, because you want to hold the Savage Surge in your hand so that the center of Battlemaster is lethal if he ever uh, lets it through again. Mm, okay. Right, I mean, it's unlikely that your opponent's going to let it through again, but... Yeah. Maybe I just like drawing cards too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I and mean, then he's just going to trample it. Yeah, here's the Nylea's Emissary. Well, he's actually going to put it on the uh, on the Fortune Hunter here. I'm pretty surprised by that. I mean, his opponent is tapped out. He does have a 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah. He would make that guy into a 13-13. Thirteen, thirteen. And then yeah. he gets to attack with the Battlemaster and the uh, Fortune Hunter, and his opponent automatically dies. Yeah. So I definitely like putting that on the Battlemaster better. Because you win because the game. Because you this just turn. win the game that turn. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's usually a stronger play. Yeah. I, mean, I, I guess I found uh, somebody who likes drawing cards even more than me. <laughs> 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 but still, John Pennock in the driver's seat here in a big way. Oh yeah. I mean, he's very few cards that game. matter here, though. Ah. Uh, Divine verdict yeah, now. Man. What are we looking at here? Yeah, I, I don't think the Divine Verdict is going to help Will Lowry that much. I mean, Pennock, I think, has more cards in hand, even. Okay. But, I mean, we're going to see a couple of draw steps here for Will Lowry if, if, he, if he does pull off that uh, Verdict, right? Uh, a couple might be a generous statement. I okay. Mean, I, I, I don't think so. I think it, when, once he taps all his mana for that, uh, remember that the Fortune Hunter does have Trample, so John can just uh, target it with, like, a Pump Spell or two. Ah, and you're then right. Totally. And then Lowry just dies anyway. So. Okay. Yep. You got. You're right. Because he can't kill both. You know, Will Lowry really does need to be able to interact with both creatures, and he's not going to be able to do that this turn. Yeah. So attack with both. And then, so the play here is to verdict the Fortune Hunter and Chump Block. Is that what we're doing? If you're sitting in Will Lowry's seat. I think so. I think that's all you really can do. Yuck. <laughs> There's Divine Verdict. Not to be confused with Supreme Verdict, which would be much better here. <laughs> There's a Chump Block. I mean, Supreme Verdict would even leave the 3-3 three, three Trample Bot. It would. And Pettit could just, <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> just pump it and actually, kill him anyway. Totally true. It doesn't even help. That's brutal. And there's Divine Verdict. Kill the Fortune Hunter. He'd have like, the ideal rare from a different set. It's still not good enough. It's still not good enough. Yeah. So... John Pennock, way, way, way ahead at this point. Oh, look, it's, he, has, he has an unblockable creature in his hand, too. <laughs> and did he just blank a draw step with a grip tight as well, make sure that there's no lands, nothing fishy comes up, and I think we're going to see a concession here. Seems like it. <laughs> yeah. Wow, John Pennock just punishing Will Lowry for missing some land drops and keeping kind of a, a sketchy, you know, a no two drop, no third land opener, and uh, yeah, it, just it, it burying was, him here. Could have been much worse, I guess. There's a battle-wise hoplite for Will Lowry, and he's also got a traveling philosopher, so he did manage to come up with a couple of chump blockers, but... That's not going to do it. Yeah, Pennock can just attack with everybody, and then he wins anyway. He wins anyway. Yeah, the one from the one trample from the emissary is going to be enough yep. when combined with the unblockable 
That's the potentially unblockable, just the three damage from the Horizon and also the one damage from the Omen's Peak. And that's exactly five, even if yep. Lowry blocks the maximum efficiency. Yep. All right, so John Pennick. Here, we're in the quarterfinals, and he is up a game. Not a bad I place like to be. Sec. Yeah, it's okay. You get a look at John. He plays on <laughs> he plays on uh, Magic Online a lot as Doctor Panic. Yeah, known uh, known a lot as a a master of known formats. So this is a brand new format. We're finding him at the top eight here. Uh, he uh, he and Jerry Thompson are the people who you'd like to talk to when you're trying to figure out what how, you should be playing at a tweak. PTQ. Uh -huh. Are you trying to figure out how to tweak your Call Blade deck, how to tweak your, you know, sweet whatever deck? Nice. Upcoming They're the guys you want to talk to. Upcoming webcast schedule, Pro Tour Theros next weekend. Please do join us. That will be a fun one. Jake will be competing. I will be commentating. Standard and Theros draft. That's just next weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. GP Louisville is the weekend after that. Jake, you and I will also be there, October 19th and 20th. <laughs> Another week after that, this one we're over in Europe, Grand Prix Antwerp. That is Modern, and our European coverage team is going to be covering that. I can't wait to watch that. I love Modern. Grand Prix and I Valencia. love the European coverage team. Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah. They, they make it easy, you know, to, to watch, understand what's going on. I love that. Uh, Grand Prix Valencia, Theros Limited, November 9th and 10th. GPDC is Legacy, and it's on November 16th and 17th, following weekend. I'm going to be there watching some Legacy. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'll be there battling. You're going to battle? I think so. Do you know what you're going to run yet? No, it's like over a month from Dude, now. Dude, it's Legacy. <laughs> what, you think there's going to be like a new deck? Grand Prix Albuquerque <laughs> Standard, November 23rd through 24th. I'll be there. Grand Prix I'll also be there. Vienna <laughs> <laughs> is Standard, November 30th through December 1st. And that takes us to the end of the, uh, to the calendar year, I believe. I don't think we have any more webcasts uh, for the rest of Jeez. December after that. We've got a lot of traveling coming up, Oh, don't we? buddy, you bet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's going to be great. Love doing it, bringing you all the magic action from around the world here. Grand Prix, Pro Tours, all of it. You know what card we haven't seen at all this weekend that kind of upsets me? What's that? Curse of the Swine. Oh, oh yeah, go. that's a good one. All right, we're underway <laughs> here. Voyaging Seder for... This is a side match here. Pierre Christophe. Monden, and that is James Fulgium on the left. So PCM on the left there. He he's playing Voyaging Hitter, a card you like quite a bit. Yeah, I like it a lot. Uh huh. And this is the reason why it lets you play four drops on turn three. You, we were talking about comparing it to to Opal Opaline Unicorn, and you said you like the Voyaging Hitter a lot more because the difference between playing a four drop a turn early and playing a five drop. A turn early, you know, the, the the two to four versus the three to five gap is is a much different animal. Yeah, and also, um, I mean, you get to actually play a three, where the, I mean, there are a lot of really good threes in the format. Mm -hmm. All right, so it looks like Rage of Perforos and Prescient Chimera have been exposed. This is pretty nice ones to get exposed. No kidding, he's got three better cards than that in his hand. Maybe he's no, may, you know what I would think if my opponent did this. I'd think that he doesn't have any more lands in hand. And he's just like, here's my two most expensive spells. I might not get to cast them. <laughs> All right, we're going to head back over to our main feature match area. And there it is, John Pennock on the left. Will Lowry, this time he has a two-drop. Traveling Philosopher. Sounds like such a nice, smart, talkative person, but really it's just a bear that beats you down. Yeah. yeah. He's kind of not a very kind philosopher. Well, he doesn't he, have that much to tell you. He tricks you. <laughs> Unless you want to read the flavor text, there's a lot of that. <laughs> yeah. All right, Battlewise Hoplite is philosophizing. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, <laughs> he's uh, is his turn three play. Unfortunately, not a three drop, but still a very solid two drop for him here. Let's see what uh, John Pennick comes up with for his turn. You see, he's got that uh, the horsefish Ooh, reaching nice. hippocamp in his hand. That's a four though, so. That one's not coming down quite yet. Looks like he also has a Burnished Heart in his hand, which he may want to play. He uh -huh. may also want to play Agent of the Horizons. Yeah, there it is, Agent of Horizons, and he's just going to say go here. This is going to be tricky, though. I mean, he can't realistically block here, can he? I mean, I think I think you kind of have to. Oh, Trading really? the Agent for a, for a trick is fine. Okay. Most spots. Okay. 
see what he decides. Block. A lot can go wrong here, though the worst case, like you mentioned, is just a trick trade. Oh, he says, sure. Yeah, and that, that's great for Pennick. Yeah, Pennick's got to be happy about that. Very happy about that. And here's a four drop, though, for Will Lowry. A philosopher and an Acroan horse. Here, I have a gift for you. I don't think Pennick's too upset about that. Got to actually pretty a pretty darn deck, decent though. blocker against Will Lowry, right? It, it is a pretty good blocker against Will Lowry, but. It, Something else that's interesting to think about is the one ones that Will Lowry is getting are going to be really good against the Battle Masters. And those You're are right. the crux of John Pennock's strategy. It's a great point, Jake. I mean, those Battle Masters, as big as they get, they still don't have evasion. No trample, no flying, no unblockability, no intimidate. They can still be indefinitely chump blocked. And, uh, you know, that's the downside. I mean, the upside is that they get ridiculous. Oh, yeah. And uh, if your opponent has a steady stream of 1-1 soldiers to get in the way, it definitely makes Centaur Battlemaster look a lot worse. And he's going to say go. So it looks like, it looks like he's got a, uh, he's going to go for the breaching Hippocamp play here. And that makes sense because it's not completely unreasonable to imagine that Will's just going to bash with both and then he can just gobble up that soldier with the Hippocamp. He could also have the Horizon Chimera in hand, potentially. Remember that one he wheeled? That would be exceptionally nice here. Yeah, I don't see it, though. Yeah, no, he doesn't. So, horsefish it is. Horsefish. That's a pretty good combo. <laughs> Look, I'm just reading the rules text on the card, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... Oh, he's also got a Savage Surge that he could use to one for one. No, it's going to be the Breaching Hippocamp. And what is he going to take down here? Just block the Soldier for value. Yeah, there he goes. I did notice he has a Nemesis Immortals in his hand, too, with one card in his graveyard. So that, that is something that could factor into his decision making down the line, too. You know, just, well, if I get a creature in my yard, I get to play this a turn early, something like that. Is that the clone? Ooh, I believe it is. Artisan of Fates? I believe so. Interesting card. Uh, kind of a tricky one. <laughs> you have to target it, and then it gets to... When you do, it gets a trigger, and then it can become a copy of any creature on the battlefield. Right now, there's not really much that you'd want to copy, No, nah, there's really not. You certainly don't want to make an a crone horse of your own. Definitely not. We know it's pretty. Oh, yeah, that's you don't want one. It might take a lot of people to make that horse. <laughs> yes. It's like the clown car of magic cards. They just keep coming out. Like, da -da 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 -da. <laughs> <laughs> Betty Hill music. All right, Breaching Hippocamp, get in there. Whoa, easy. He's got to rein in the, the fish horse here and make a decision pre-combat, it looks like. And he's just going to run out that Nemesis Immortals here. And he's actually just going to pass the turn back. That was his one opening to get an attack in with the Breaching Hippocamp, where it would actually trade for something meaningful, because now there's going to be another soldier. And I'm sure that Will would be happy to trade off a couple of soldiers for the Hippocamp. So all of these gain flying. <laughs> and Pettig did not realize that uh, Breaching Hippocam did not have flying. <laughs> As many have not. It's pretty confusing. We've all made that mistake. That's a mistake you have to make once. Which mistake? Uh, he thought his Breaching Hippocamp had flying. He did? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I was writing down some results. Uh, Rusty was bringing me Timothy. The reason uh, one his match Marshall was so happy about him forgetting that is because Marshall earlier this weekend was stating that uh, Breaching Hippocamp should specifically say that it does not have flying because yeah, I, I thought everybody this, believes it has flying. Yeah, I thought it should say that its special ability was not flying. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've attacked it into a 4-4 and then they've blocked and I've been like, 
how what yeah how did that happen yeah that also explains remember when he took it pretty early I mean, if I yeah, thought I had thought flying, it was a flash I was, snapping trick. That's sick. I, I would <laughs> probably take it that highly too. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. We've got to remember we are still very early in Theros here. So, uh, Tyler uh, Branstetter, for those of you following at home, he's up a game in his match, and uh, Timothy Thomason, he won 2-0, so he's into the semis. And here, this Pegasus is kind of taking over the game. There's your. Uh, your favorite hoplite plus all of these soldiers. Now, now these are just soldiers, right? They're not human soldiers. That's correct. They're just soldiers. Okay. They're not race specific. Yeah. All right. Agent of Horizons for John Pennick. He can also follow up with the burnished heart. There it is. All right. So he's getting as many blockers down as he can, but like you mentioned before, Jake, that uh, cavalry Pegasus is, is doing some pretty darn decent work here. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the horse plus Pegasus plan is one of the coolest things that Will's deck can do. Mm -hmm. Horse plus Pegasus plan. Yeah, a little, you know, horse statue. Plus a uh, horse with wings. All right, John Pennick drops down to seven, draws his card for the turn. He's got kind of an awkward ordeal of Thassa, of, of Thassa in his hand. So he may have to... Uh, I think the correct play here is probably to uh, put the ordeal of Thassa onto your nemesis immortals. Mm -hmm. um, attack with it. And uh, maybe the hippocamp, and then end step um, horizon chimera, mm -hmm. and then um, pop the ordeal on your turn by monstering the nemesis. By what? Gaining the extra life, and by what in the nemesis race? What? By what in the nemesis? I didn't hear what you said. Uh, you can use the monstrous on the nemesis. The monstrous on the nemesis. To then yes. pop your ordeal of Thassa on the next turn and get two plus one counters on it, out of it. Plus, you get to gain life from your draw step and gain life off both ordeal of Thassa triggers. That's a lot of value. And thanks to uh, Horizon Chimera's ability to eat one of these Pegasus, uh, it may actually give you a window to kind of win the game. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure if it's possible to win this race in that situation, but that seems like the the best math you could ask for. He's going to go ahead and attack with these and not use that ordeal right now, though. Lowry with a couple of blocks. A chump block and a couple of uh, and a little trade off for the old horse fish. That is going to make that monstrous ability even cheaper on the Nemesis Immortals. Yes it is. It's currently reduced by two mana thanks to the two creatures in the graveyard. Let's see what Will Lowry comes up with for his turn. Yeah, now uh, he can get in there for four. He can attack for six right now of uh, flying power. Okay. Which is probably what he's going to go for, but uh, he doesn't realize that you know, only five of it's going to make its way through, and then the Chimera is actually going to jump back, jump John back up to three, and then John might be able to find his way out of this with a uh, ordeal of Thassa getting cracked. All right, here it is. Horizon Chimera. This one does have flying. This one does. This 3-2 with flash does have flying. So he's trying to decide what he wants to jump in front of here. Another issue that uh, 
that John faces. I mean, not that he's, he's already under enough pressure as it is, but he's also got to be careful because if Will does have a way to target something, he, he can actually make his artisan of fates into the... Uh, Agent of Horizon, mm -hmm. and he can actually pave to make it unblockable, too. <laughs> You've got to be careful of that. And he clearly recognizes that. He yeah. is going to go ahead and... He has to assume that his, that his opponent can't target it right now, but that doesn't mean that he's not one draw step away from it. And killing one Pegasus doesn't really get the job done. He needs both of them to be gone, but he's going to take four here, drop him down to three life, and he just didn't use that mana for the for the ordeal there. Just didn't do it. Yeah. yeah, I just feel like you want to get those counters rolling as fast as possible. Yeah, that's why I would have put it on the Nemesis last turn. Because yeah. uh, also now, you know, can you monstrous and cast the ordeal on the same turn? Does he have the mana to do so? I'm not sure. Because that was the whole way that he would have been able to gain enough life yeah, to maybe he can survive just do it. crackback. It, it actually costs a full nine to, to do the Nemesis. So it's uh, seven mana for him currently. So no. So no, not he cannot. both. All right, so he's he's going to need to use this ordeal here. You know, he's still not cracking the ordeal. Pretty surprising to me. All right, so there's a chump lock on the nemesis. John Pennick up a game here, looking to make it into the semifinals. He's in the Going quarters. Down to seven here. Let's see what he has in his hand. Will Lowry's at seven. Nothing. He could be saving mana up for that Nemesis Immortals, but you know, with with the endless stream of tokens, it gets a little bit worse here. It doesn't really seem like the greatest thing. Is that an ordeal of Heliod? It looks like it, yes. Okay, so that's going to give that guy a counter. Also make it so that he... Uh, wait. Sh shouldn't John Pennick be at four from his draw step? or? Yes. Or did he go to two and go to three from his draw step? Man, I can't remember. He might have missed it too, though. It's possible. I suppose that is possible. Is that a grip tide? It is a grip tide. All right, here's a grip tide. All right, so John Panic just hanging in there. That was a lethal attack there. But he does not die. And in fact has really wrestled control of this game from Will Will Lowry. And John looks like he is poised to head in. Alright, so he does he, he called it out, so he might have been and yeah, he had a lower life total. took three and he went to one, so he wasn't. Okay, four. so he just was at four, it just wasn't updated on the graphic. That makes more sense. All right, so we're going to see this whole ordeal. It's been waiting. <laughs> Ordeal's like, put me in, coach. Let's do this. I'm ready, coach. John's got to be really careful, though, because he, he either needs to win this turn, gain some life, or find a way to deal. Looks like he's found a way to win, so that must be blocked, and it's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's it. Yep, and there it is. Panic John by Panic. the skin of his teeth. Yeah, he barely makes it through there, but he does. He finds a way. Sigh of relief there. And uh, he is into the semifinals here in Oklahoma City. So, no, Will Lowry, great run for him here. Fantastic weekend for Will. We really have to give it up to the guy. We mentioned it at the, at the top of the uh, round, but he only lost one match going into the top eight. He 5-1 draft, and he 9-0'd the sealed. Really impressive. Yeah, such a sick run. Yeah, especially on a brand new format like this, you know, where it can be tough, like... Maybe you open a really good sealed pool and you just put together an amazing day one, but then like, you know, drafting is a little more, a little more taxing on the skill end of how to build a deck in this format. But no, Definitely. he found it anyway. Got the lifetime money leaders here. At the top of the list, we see Kai Boudet. Yeah, John Finkel second. 
Shuhei Nakamura, who's here coming in ninth place. Yeah. I wonder if this has been updated. That from today? From today. <laughs> uh, could have been. I doubt it. Gabriel Nassi, <laughs> Olivia Ruel. There's another Ruel it's down at the bottom. 327,000. <laughs> PV, Raph Levy, LSV, Brian Kibler, a lot of Hall of Famers. That whole left row are Hall of Famers, right? Um, yeah, they all yeah, are. I think yeah. so. Yep, lifetime money leaders. Maybe they should just use that. <laughs> that was a joke. I don't joke. think that's a very good <laughs> no, that <was> a joke. <laughs> Got Saito over there on the top. Another Japanese player, Yuya Watanabe. Nikolai Herzog. Ben Stark. Camille Cornelson, you mentioned him earlier this weekend. Yeah, I mean, he is, uh, most of the Europeans consider him just the greatest of all time. Okay, yeah, and you know, yeah. there's Yelga uh, Vigersman, you, you mentioned him as well, actually in the same breath. You said just, they were both very consistent players, Yeah, right? I mean, they're, they're the guys who top 16 every pro tour they play in kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's move back over here to uh, Pierre Christophe uh, Mondam, and he is playing up against James Fulgham, and looks like PCM had the first match win, or first game win there, but we've got a board seat that's an arena athlete. Yeah, and look at this. Look at all of these lands that Pierre has in play. I imagine something happened here involving some sort of ordeal of perhaps an ordeal of Nylia. Yeah, there, there are 10 lands in play and actual Nylia. Do you see that down there, Jake? There's yeah, and I mean, that works pretty well yeah, with that ordeal, huh? God of the hunt. Yeah, having a bunch of extra is just fine. And there's a leaf crown, leaf crown dryad that's on a uh, disciple of Phoenix here. It jumps in front. Pierre goes down to one, and he is going to attack for lethal here. And that's it. All right, good timing. Right when we come in, the match ends. Look at that. Oh, wow. And James revealed the top card of his library. Pierre at one. Spark Jolt. Spark Jolt. Unbelievable. Yeah.